Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 6. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at implementing some controls. Yes, we're going to get our character walking around our scene. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else I upload to my channel. And if you've enjoyed the series so far, please feel free to check my Patreon out or YouTube memberships where you'll get things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, the old style Resident Evil games had what we call tank control. So we're going to implement those, but you don't necessarily have to have them as tank controls if you want to make a more, how do we say, well, not really a modern Resident Evil, but a more upgraded control system. So the tank controls are what made Resident Evil, the older ones, much more, well, not annoying, but they, they were a quirk of the game. So we're going to replicate that. So the way we're going to do it is actually quite simple, but the code we use isn't quite as simple as I would like it to be at this point. So we're going to go through it and I will explain my best as we go along. So let's go to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create and create a new folder and call this one character. So any script relating to a character will be within this folder. So let's right click, create C sharp script and let's call this tank controls and let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now I do realize that this is the second script we've ever written in this series uh, and it, like I say it does worry me a little bit that this may be a bit too complicated for absolute beginners but rest assured that everything will make sense when we get to the end of this tutorial. Every, every line of code you'll think oh that's what that means. So as always when we open our script up this is the default look and we're going to need a couple of variables and if we go to our first cam script if we switch to that we actually use four variables there and we were quite clever because we introduced three different types there and we actually need to use three different types in this new script so we understand what a bool is we understand what a game object is and we understand what an integer is however we're going to use a float just in case. And I'm sure I explained in the last script we did that a float is a decimal number. So before we can actually write any scripts, as crazy as it may seem, uh, we need to go back into Unity and we need to check out if we're going to be pressing the right buttons. So to do that, if we go to edit and then go down to project settings and then input, you'll see over here in the inspector panel, axis. Click the little button next to it. And you'll see a couple of different things. We have first two, horizontal, vertical. And if we expand those again, you'll see how to move. So you can see here, it's standard keys. A and D, so A is the positive, which means left in this case. Sorry, negative, not positive. So A is negative, which means left. D is right. So that is the positive button because Think of it as you read right, that's the positive way to go. Reading backwards is the negative way to go, so that would be A. And obviously for vertical is S and W. So it's standard WASD keys that you would use, but you can also use up, down, left, right arrows. Just keep note of their names here, horizontal and vertical. Vertical is a way to move forward, so we'd use W or S, so forward or backwards. And horizontal is left and right, so we'll be able to turn around or rotate using A or D. So now we know the names, we can go back into our script and then we can start writing. Now it is going to be all within one single method, which is the update method, so we can get rid of any annotations and the void start method. So let's start by doing our first variable, and that is obviously going to be the player himself. So public game object the player semicolon uh, i will point out here that although we are going to attach this to the player anyway the reason i'm actually calling it the player and referencing its own object is so we can physically see in the script what the player means rather than as use for example this dot game object that's the only reason you can use this dot game object to reference the player itself I'm only doing this so we can visually see what we're doing so it makes sense in the script. Like I say, this is for beginners. So the next one is going to be a bool. Remember, true or false? Because we need to check if we are walking or not 
or moving or running, whatever. So we're going to have public bool and we'll call it is moving semicolon. The next one is going to relate to the horizontal movement and the vertical movement. So public float, remember this is a decimal number and we're having it a decimal just in case because, you know, things need to be precise in gaming. So float and it's going to be horizontal move, semicolon, and then also the same for vertical. So public float vertical move, semicolon. So just to recap here, this one is going to be for the player. This one will be a check to see if we are currently moving or not. This one will dictate where we're moving horizontally, and this one will be vertically. Now, the horizontal one is more than likely going to just be a rotation because that's how the tank controls would work anyway. So in the void update method, we now need to check if we are pressing either the horizontal or the vertical button. So we can put if and in brackets, input, which references obviously the input that we are pressing, dot get button, which means key in this case, and in brackets and quotes, the name of the button that we're looking to be pressing. So the first one is going to be horizontal. And then quote, close bracket. And now we need to state an or. And to do that in Unity, it is this symbol. And if you don't know what that is, it's a double one of those, and it is the key next to the Z on your keyboard. Yes, Z, simply because I am British. Z if you're American or whatever. I don't think it makes a difference. Same letter. So if you hold shift and press that, you'll get the or symbol for the if statement. And then we need to have input dot get button and in brackets and quotes vertical. And then close bracket, close bracket, and open curly bracket. So we've now created an if statement. So we're saying if we are pressing one of these buttons, then we do the following, which is going to be the lines of Kobe right now. We're also going to have another section later on that says if we're not pressing it, then we do something else. So the first thing we want to do here is say that we are moving. So we're going to set that bool as true because we are pressing the movement buttons. So is moving equals true, semicolon. Now, this won't actually relate to anything just yet. The reason I have this here is because you could think of it as a way of future-proofing the script for whenever we have more movement going on. For example, when we change to running or anything like that. So it's a way of future-proofing. It's always good to have something like that. So next thing we want to do is actually play an animation. So if we type now the player dot get component and in spiky brackets, the name of the component that we need to receive. So if I go back to Unity and click on our soldier, which is our character, you'll see the animator component. So we need to reference that component in our script. So animator open close bracket and what we need to do now is tell it what we want to do with that component after a dot and we want to play so play and in brackets and quotes much like we did with the uh, if statement up here the name of the animation that we want to play so if we go back and go to the actual um, controller we can see that we want the walk animation to play. But while we're here, we may as well set the idle back to the default animation. So right click on idle, set as default state. And we want walk to play when we're pressing the walk buttons. So walk, quote, close bracket, semicolon. So now we're playing that walk animation. Next thing, we need to actually tell it how to move, where to move, and how fast. So the horizontal move is going to be the rotation. And remember, vertical move is going to be moving forward and backward. So we want to tell it how quick to rotate and how quick to move forward if we are pressing those buttons. So firstly, let's have horizontal move equals, 
And now we need to reference the actual input itself. So input dot get axis right there. And here we need to reference horizontal because that's the exact one we're getting right there. So make sure you do get that right. Don't get yourself mixed up here. Horizontal in brackets and quotes. Yeah. And then we need to multiply that by time dot delta time and then multiply that by, I think it's probably going to be round about 150 semicolon. Now, I realize this line may be a little bit confusing. So all we're saying here is that we need the value of horizontal move to be equal to whatever the input is multiplied by time dot delta time. What is time dot delta time? Well, you can think of it as a way of how fast the game is running. So i.e. if it's running normal speed, it would pretty much be just be one. Uh, if we're running at zero, it would mean that that's zero, it's nothing stopped. Two would be double time. Usually, like I say, that's going to be one, so we don't need to worry about that too much, but it's always good practice to have something like that in, so your movement relates to your game in the correct way. And then multiply by 150, so we're just increasing how quick the rotation is. Obviously, the higher this number, the quicker the rotation. The slower this number, the slower the rotation. So next, we have to do the same for our vertical movement. So vertical move is equal to input dot get axis brackets and quotes vertical and then we need to multiply that once again by time dot delta time and then multiply that by about I think it's going to be about four or five so I'm just going to test it as four for now and semicolon. Once again, this works the exact same way. We're basically setting the speed at how quick we're moving. Remember, this is walking and there is plenty of option to work with what we're doing. For example, this four could end up being 4.5. That's why we have it as a float. But we can always test the game when we've written the script and make any changes if we need to. So we've set those variables. We know how fast we want to move. We know how fast we want to rotate. So how do we implement it? Well, all we can do is go the player dot transform dot rotate. And in brackets, we need to set an X, Y, and Z number. So we don't want to rotate at all on the X because that would spin us round the wrong way. It would spin us on our feet. So we have zero. Comma. Now we do want to rotate on the y-axis, so it will, if I go back to unity and go back to scene, back to our soldier and rotate on the y, you'll see we want the rotation like that. We don't want it like that, and we don't want it like that. So we only need the y. That's where we type in horizontal move, and then comma, and set the z as zero. Close bracket, semicolon. And then we need to set how quick we're moving. And we're going to be moving along the Z axis because if we go back to our scene, we can see the Z, we'd be moving forwards or backwards. And that's along the Z. So let's head back into Unity. And then we will have the player dot transform because obviously we're transforming it. Remember, we're getting this up here and modifying things here. So transform dot translate. And translate is basically a way of saying translate yourself forward. It's moving forward. That's just kind of what the terminology we're using here. And like I said, it's on the Z. So the X needs to be zero, comma. The Y needs to be zero, comma. And then finally, vertical move. Close bracket, semicolon. And that is pretty much that if statement done. Now, we did say earlier that we do need to create an otherwise, or as it is named here, else. So we need to know if we're pressing them, we do it here. And if we're not, we do something else. So in this case, all we need to do is type down here, else, and then open curly bracket. And in this section, we put is moving equals false, semicolon. And then the player dot 
get component, much like we did in the first one, and open spiky brackets, animator, open close bracket, dot, play, and in brackets and quotes, the name of the animation that we want to play. In this case, idle, because we're stopping. So quote, close bracket, semicolon, and save that script. So let's head back into Unity. Now, it's just compiling here, as we can see down here, the little icon turning around. I have no errors, so my script is written perfectly. Well, I say perfectly until we test it. Uh, if you do have an error, go to your console here and it will tell you what the error is and where to find it. If you do have any problems, you can get this script on the website. If you head over there, download an assets, Resident Evil clone, tutorial number six, and you can get the script that we've written right there. So let's go to our um, scripts folder, which is somewhere. There we are. So tank controls, let's attach that to our soldier right there. And then we just need to set the player so himself basically there. And now let's press play. And there we go. There is our player walking. Now, right now he's gone off screen, which is fine. So I'm going to press play again and I'm going to walk over this way. There we go. So hopefully you've got your script written down perfectly. So four looks to be almost right. It does look to be a little bit fast. So I'm just going to go back to the script and change four to 3.9. And then I'm going to put an F after. The reason I put an F after is because we are defining it as a float. So any decimal number, you always have to have that little F after it. So let's save that script now. Head back to Unity, and let's press play once again. There we go. Now there is one little thing that I will point out here now, as we get further this way. I'll let our chap walk through here, and he walks straight through walls. Now, we are going to deal with that, so don't worry too much. You just get your tank controls down for now, and the best thing that you can do just to keep things sensible, as it were, is on the soldier himself, click on add component, and then type in the search bar collider and add a box collider to him. And what we'll quickly do is change the center position on the Y to about 0.5, and then change the size of that box collider to round about the same. If we press play once again, we're not, it's still not going to be fixed, but having a box collider now enables us to get ready for our next tutorial. So the whole idea of what we've done here is we've created those tank controls. And don't worry, they will get more intuitive. We will be able to run and whatnot, but this is the basics. So we're setting ourselves up ready for the future. So next tutorial, what I want to do is I want to work with our character a little bit more. Let's stop him going through the walls. And I also want to work with triggers for the cameras. So rather than just switch when we get over there, I want to have a trigger that allows us to go back and forth between the two current cameras that we have. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.